Today I'd like to introduce the foremost thermal battery manufacturer in the U.S., Eagle Pitcher, and URI's Jewel Tone Battery Blaster Team. The team of technical directors from Eagle Pitcher consists of Frank Puglia, Dan Wirtz, and Sean Thurber. The battery blasters from URI are composed of five seniors, myself, Stephen Kobaleski, Alexander Amato, Matthew Tabatnik, Matt St. Jean, and Ryan Fish. Eagle Pitcher proudly fuels 90% of the U.S. military's munitions and mission-critical systems, showcasing an unwavering commitment to national security. The impact of Eagle Pitcher's technology is not confined to our planet, it extends far beyond, powering more than 600 satellites currently orbiting the Earth. They specialize in high-capacity batteries that are meant to withstand the most extreme conditions. Our project is fueled by a compelling need to advance the field of high-performance batteries. The motivation behind our efforts lies in the necessity to dynamically stress test these batteries, pushing their boundaries of their capabilities to enhance overall performance and reliability. We are tasked to support sophisticated AI analytical capabilities that will not only optimize battery performance, but also elevate our understanding of their intricate behaviors. This project will contribute significantly to the evolution of their next generation battery technology, ensuring that it aligns seamlessly with the customer demands of the advancing battery storage system market. Our targeted outcome envisions a system providing a dynamically high rate load for rigorous battery stress testing. This system merges with an existing Eagle Li battery management and cell balancing platform aiming to refine and develop algorithms through AI data analysis. Our team achieved a series of accomplishments from developing the system specifications and crafting a prototype GUI to scaling a dynamically configured load bank. We began integrating with the Eagle Li management system and demonstrated our proof of concept by building a low power prototype that successfully interfaced between our microcontroller and the load system. Notably, we validated the design's linearity, marking a milestone in our collective achievements. The strategic initiative ensures Eagle Pitcher's continued dominance in the market by streamlining data collection for dynamic loading conditions. It also enhances battery modeling, providing a distinct competitive edge and expedites the evaluation of next generation batteries. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Stephen Kowaleski. My task focused on designing the load distribution system for our project. An initial concept we proposed was a capacitive load system. This was attractive as we can control the voltage, current, time, and we could calculate the corresponding resistor values needed to accomplish our rates of change. The capacitive load system did, however, have one drawback. It lacked the ability to provide a linear rate of discharge, which, during our meetings with Eagle Pitcher's technical directors, was a desirable function of the design. Uh, with that, we decided to pivot to a design that would allow us to accomplish this task. Um, this design will allow us to distribute the load between eight channels, and using Ohm's law, the resistance value for each channel could be calculated. But my design contributions do go beyond just using Ohm's law. I explored pulse power resistors that they could exceed their continuous wattage ratings for a short period of time. This would reduce the size of the resistor significantly, but requires a delicate balance involving power, time, and temperature management to avoid potential fire hazards. The importance of getting this calculation correct is because the load system acts as a cornerstone for the entire design. It not only gives the resistance values, but tells the control circuit how many channels it will be managing, and allows us to calculate the power distribution between the resistors and each control switch on its respective channel. Um, shown behind me is the actual distribution system of the battery to the control system and eventually to the load. Each one of the channels were scaled accordingly. Um, this, the power distribution we have is to determine the pulse width and also identifies the wattage resistance. It will also aid us in determining the overall form factor of our final design. And for my future work, 
will consist of selecting the appropriate rated pulse energy resistors. This will be based on the amount of time we will cycle the system on, using SOLIDWORKS to model the form factor of our finish design, and I will also have to use a multi-physics CAD tool such as ANSYS to model the Lorenz force as this adds a stress and strain element which is dependent on the amount of current traveling through the system and its physical design. None of the resistive channels will work without switching components that would allow us high rates of change and could control the response of the dynamic loading requirements. And with that, I'd like to introduce my team member heading up our high power control system, Alex Amato. Hello everyone, my name is Alexander Amato and I am responsible for the switching circuit of our project. Our system's main goal was to discharge a battery at a rate of 125 kilowatts per millisecond. For reference, that's 125 air fryers that operate at 1,000 watts, all making chicken nuggets all at the same time in one millisecond. That's a lot of chicken nuggets. To accomplish this, a load needed to be provided to a battery, and a switch would need to connect the battery and the load to ground to complete the circuit. The first design method I proposed was using a comparator to send a signal to a gate driver, which would then power our switch. Closed loop feedback could be established back to the comparator, and early calculations put the switch's turn on time at 50 nanoseconds. However, after linearity became a design parameter, I went back to the drawing board and began to research general op amps. Although a comparator is a type of op amp, which means that it has a feedback loop, it can only output a high or low signal, whereas general non invert op amps operate in a more linear behavior. A non-inverting op amp takes a small voltage difference between its two input terminals and amplifies it to produce a much larger output voltage. This, along with the low impedance output, makes them good at driving or powering switches. This brings me to my this brings me to high-speed op amps, which can do all of that and at a very fast flow rate, which was needed for our design to work at our desired rate. After figuring out how to power the switch, I then figured out I didn't need to figure out what switch to use. In our case, MOSFETs would be a good solution, as the threshold voltage to turn the switch on, as well as the voltage from the drain to source, both act acted with linear behavior. To meet the high power requirements of our design parameters, I found high power MOSFETs to be the solution to meet the power dissipation needed in order not to blow up the switch itself. This all culminated into a high power a high speed op amp driving a high power MOSFET design. This graphic is an oscilloscope reading of our low power model's behavior, and although component selection and circuit layout of the design are still subject to change, the real world behavior is in line with what was proposed, which is a linear voltage strain of our battery, which can be seen by the purple line, and a linear turn on of our MOSFET, which can be seen by the green line. My future work consists of purchasing the selected components of to build our circuit, our switching circuit, completing and validating the reference voltage circuit, finalizing the integration of a clamping MOSFET for on-off control via our microcontroller, and physical assembly of our switching circuit. Hi, I'm Matt Batnick, and my current goals have been microcontroller development, future microcontroller to GUI integration, and future safety implementations. Here's another look at our main block diagram I cover the microcontroller on the bottom left. My technical contributions begin with selecting the right microcontroller board. We chose the Nucleo H723ZG from STM32 due to its overwhelming capabilities. To familiarize myself with STM32 Cube IDE, STM32's development software, I created test programs focusing on transmitting, receiving, and pin setting, which are all essential for our project's functionality. I have also created the test code to run the proof of concept low power model. For user inputs, the user will need to download a serial, currently will need to download a serial terminal and the necessary drivers required, which will allow the user to input a series of integers that will be sent to the microcontroller for the purpose of turning on a set amount of channels for a set amount of time in seconds specifically. Then the microcontroller will take that information, and then as seen on the picture on the right, it will send it through the GPIO pin outputs into the, into the wires, into the resistors, into the diodes to show the actual channels that turn on specifically. For reading voltage, 
the current system that I've created is just a 9 volt battery into the breadboard which has a voltage divider system. The voltage divider is necessary because the microcontroller GPIO pins are only able to take a limit of 3.3 volts. So then that information will be sent to the microcontroller which will then transform it into ADC values which is then outputted or transmitted back into the serial terminal as seen in the picture to the right. My remaining challenges begin with receiving and transmitting from and to the GUI. This will inherently replace the serial terminal that I used in the last two programs. I also need to change the program so that they can communicate with the user through SPY rather than UART, since SPY can communicate at a much higher rate than UART. I also need to create flexible calculations for scaling purposes, which means if the user wishes to install a higher amount of channels, let's say 18, the code needs to be able to take any amount of channels that the user specifies and be able to actually output that through any through a set amount of GPI put, GPI opens because currently it only will run through eight channels, specifically eight. Finally, I need to research and implement various safety features that the microcontroller will, will be able to have an impact in and will be able to read if there's ever any issue in the circuit. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Matthew St. Jean, Senior in Electrical Engineering. The objective of the ELE Comp Symposium 2024 was to design and showcase a functioning small-scale model of the system running on a low power of 9 volts from a battery that everyone here has seen. This model serves as a practical tool for analyzing a working circuit with small-scale components that are simple to integrate. MOSFETs, op-amps, and the Nucleo microcontroller were used to control the circuit, and LEDs to demonstrate its functionality. This model granted the team various insights including identifying problems that were previously unthought of and to embrace issues for prevention if similar challenges arise during the development of the full-scale model. Using this model, a current test was done to verify the circuit to see if all components were working properly. The measured currents were 38% off expected values, which leads the team to believe there was an issue in the positioning of some of the components. This model's current issue proves the need to implement an accurate current sensor in the battery blaster system. The sensor in mind is a closed loop Hall effect current sensor. This sensor has an additional feedback loop that enhances the stability and precision of the output signal, which minimizes lag time and saturation alike. Not only will this sensor validate the readings that we hope to measure, but will serve as an overcurrent and fault protection safety measure. As part of the anticipated best outcome, the test platform named the Eagle Eye must merge with our full-scale model. In preparation of this task, the platform was acquired from Eagle Pitcher and transported back to the URI Power Electronics Lab. The platform is currently rated for only 10 amps, and with our system rated at 70, an upgrade will have to be considered. For the future of this project, a confirmation of the low power model's circuit functionality will require a repositioning of the diode and a retest of the current measurements. It is anticipated that the current will be nearly identical to expected values. I plan to choose a current sensor module to implement into our system. It will be important to test the sensor's functionality with our microcontroller and user interface before merging into the system. It is also on the agenda to upgrade the Eagle Eye platform so it can handle the 70 amps our system is rated for, so it can be ready for integration when the time comes. Now to drive us home, I'd like to introduce Ryan Fish, who will showcase his work on developing a comprehensive graphical user interface to enable user control for each aspect of the Jewel Tone Battery Blaster system. And this is where we talk about the graphical user interface or the GUI. I am responsible for this portion of our design. Now you may be wondering, why do we need a GUI? A GUI will allow the user to interact with the design. It has all the pretty colors and shiny buttons that bring order and functionality. This GUI will be on a laptop or tablet. The laptop is then going to tell the microcontroller what to do. However, this begs the question, how will these two talk to each other? They are going to talk through an interface called SPY. And no, I'm not talking about this kind of SPY. 
I'm talking about a serial peripheral interface. Through this chip and some predefined relationships where the microcontroller is the leader and the laptop does as instructed, they will be able to talk. All of this is going to be possible through three different items. The first item is Visual Studio. Visual Studio is going to be where all the code is written. WPF is a graphical subsystem inside of Visual Studio that makes the development easier. And finally, C Sharp is the language in which the code will be predominantly written. However, with all good designs, there needs to be structure. The structure that will be followed is known as Model, View, View Model, or MVVM. The model is the back end, the view is the front end, and the view model is the glue that binds them. Also, EcoPicture does have a coding format that is being implemented in the GUI. This is our model. At the start, you see a profile. The profile is going to be what is sent to the microcontroller. The essential buildup of the profile is a list of how long the user wants specific amounts of current to be drained from the battery. For example, for 5 seconds, discharge 10 amps. Ideally, the user will be able to develop this in the profile management system. Then you notice a green helper class pointing towards it called convert spy. This will take the user input and transform it into a spy message to be sent to the microcontroller. Lastly, there is a code format class for sending different types of messages to the microcontroller. The main view has also been developed. This is an outline of the design that allows you to see the quality of life implementations, such as the heartbeat graphic and others. Also, you may have noticed the blank space. The reason for this is because each individual tab on the left side is going to display different content for the user to interact with. And if you would just remember this outline for one second, this is what it looks like for the moment with all the tabs switching pages. However, there's still a lot to do. For starters, this blank space has to display actual content. In order for this constant to be functional, the model aspect must also be written, which would involve implementing SPY and the other various classes. On top of that, the glue must also be written. Our team's future accomplishments in risk mitigation includes current sensor integration, power dissipation components and selection, establishing a connection between the GUI and microcontroller, a complete and finished GUI, the actual building of the switching circuit, and overall assembly of our design. We would like to thank the technical directors at Eagle Pitcher, Dan Wirtz, Frank Puglia, and Sean Thurber for their continued assistance and guidance throughout this project. It has been a huge help and the team is grateful to have them. And we'd like to thank our ELE Comp Capstone directors, Dr. Harish Sunak, Mike Smith, and Brendan Smurback for all their help as well and guidance.